Hello everyone. In today's presentation, we are going to go through how to access Uganda Matters University Library online using Mailoft. Mailoft stands for Library on Your Fingertips. It's an app and a web tool for accessing, organizing, sharing digital content and e-resources subscribed by the library. It allows users to download content and save for offline reading. The requirements for you to use MyLoft, you need to have, if you are using a web version, you require to have at least one of the following browsers, Google Chrome, Microsoft Edge, and Brave. If you are going to use a phone app, ensure that your phone has an Android version, which is 5.0 and above, a storage size of 30 MBs upon download, then you can now go ahead and Search for Mailoft app in Play Store and then install it on your phone. If you registered user of the library, in order for you to use Mailoft, we have set for you accounts and if you have an account, you should have received an email prompting you to set a password. You receive an email from Mailoft asking you to set your password. This is the criteria for setting your password. The password should have at least eight characters. It should contain at least one number. It should contain at least one capital letter. It should contain at least one small case and a special character. A special character, for example, an exclamation mark, an at sign, a hash, a star, and others. If you have set your password successfully, the criteria will turn from red to green and with a tick. Then you go ahead and, and click on continue to log in. When you click on continue, you'll be prompted to select your institute. There you'll select consortium of Uganda University libraries and then click continue. When you click on continue, you'll be prompted to enter your email and password and then you click on sign in. When you're signing in for the first time, You'll also be required to install the Mailoft browser extension. So we are going to go through uh, the process of signing in and then we shall install the Mailoft browser extension practically. Uh, now we are going to go through the practical part. I'm going to start by logging into my account. I'm going to select my institute, which is consortium. Then I select consortium, then click continue, I enter my email, and then my password. So when you are signing in for the first time, when you are using Mailoft for the first time, ensure that you, you install the Mailoft web extension. So we are going to add the extension by simply clicking on add extension then we shall click add to chrome then again we click on add extension for the browser to add to install the, the extension so the extension has been downloaded and it's being added and you can see here adding to Chrome. And now my web app has now opened fully. I can now go ahead and start using Mailoft. Mailoft has a number of functionalities, but now we're going to look at how to access the databases. And the databases we are going to look specifically through a book database and then a journal database. So to access the databases, you click on e-resources and then click database. The databases will load and as you can see, we have a number of databases within Mailoft. However, for the case of this presentation, we are going to choose to use only two databases, one a journal database and then a book database. 
we have one book database called ProQuest eBook Central. So I'm going to go through my list and then select ProQuest eBook Central. So when you select it, it will be opened in another tab. So when it opens, you still have to select the institute name because we have very many institutions which subscribe for this database. So you select your institution. So I'm going to select my institution, which is Uganda Matters University from the list. Uganda Matters University, click on it. Then click remember my, my institution such that the next time you are logging in, you will not have to go through this process again. So select remember my institution and click on continue. So ProQuest will open with a, with a search box from where we search for ebooks. So you simply have to enter in your search term. And as you can see, we selected our institution and now my institution, Uganda Matters University, can be displayed here. We enter a search term into the search box. So I'm going to search for literature. And then I click on search. And as you see, my search results are back and they have over 165,343 book results. So for me to be able to view my books very well, I'm going to select results per page. I'm going to select 50 such that I can easily be able to navigate through my books until I get that kind of book that I want to read. So I'm perusing through the list. So I would like to read literature in Africa. And I can I have a number of functionalities that I may use in order for me either to read, download or add to bookshelf. This is a functionality for full download, reading online, viewing the table of contents and then adding to bookshelf. So I'm going to view the table of contents for this particular book. Then I just simply click on table of contents. The table of contents will be loaded. Then I'll look through the table of contents and select that particular book chapter that I want to read or download. So the book has opened. And as you can see, it has the details about the book here, the title, the series, the author, the publisher, the print publication date. And then here we have read online, download book, add to bookshelf, share link to the book. When you click on share link to the book, for example, if you are a lecturer and you'd like to share the link of this book to your students you just have to click on share link and then the link of the book will come you from which you copy and then paste in your either email or you can also copy and paste it in the Moodle from which when the student clicks on this email on this link they will be able to be linked to this exact page so when someone clicks on this link they just have to land on this exact page but of course they have to be having uh, login credentials that will enable them to access this book so when you're done you when you are finished with this you click on done you can also cite this book the database has an inbuilt citation system when you click on site you can be able to cite this book in your preferred referencing style so when you click on site you just have to click on the format of the referencing style for us we use Harvard you click on Harvard and then the book will be arranged in Harvard style so you just have to cop to highlight 
the reference and then copy and paste in your reference list when you are done you still close so I'm going to peruse through the table of contents so when I peruse through my table of contents I can again still expand. For example, part one has selected the history of West African literature. However, under that, there are other subsections. Chino Achebe, things fall apart, no longer it is, are of gold. So I might be interested in this. I will just come here and click on download PDF. So my PDF is ready for download. They click on download. So if at all I want to look into what is in inside that chapter, I can say to read it online instead of downloading. Or then I read online and then download what I've read. So I click on read online. So my book chapter has opened. I can be able to read this chapter. And then another chapter. I will not have, I will not need to go back. I will just come here on the side, on the table of contents, scroll, and then select another chapter. So I'm going to select, selected history of East African literature. Click on it. So my second chapter has also opened. I look at it. So in case I want to, I find something interesting I want to highlight here, I can select that paragraph there are also a number of other functionalities for example on top here we have a full download button button for chapter download button for copying button for printing adding to bookshelf copying the link citing highlighting others this is also a button for zooming in and zooming out so we are going now to proceed and open another database so for now we are going to open another database for journals and on the only list I'm going to open Thailand Francis so this is how Thailand Francis opens and even with Thailand Francis you just have to enter your search term in this search box so I'm going to enter my search term which is financial management and then click on search so when I search for financial management I have a lot of search results as you can see I have over 700 plus search results these are far too many so I'm going to filter my search results such that I limit my search to exactly what I need so I'm going to start filtering one I'm going to select only content that I have full access to and as you can see now almost my search result my search results have reduced by half I now have 300 and 81,000 plus uh, search results so I'm going to filter further by subject so I'm going to select economics finance and business so I now have 136 search results I'm going to filter further by published in I'm now selecting Applied Economics, International Journal of Human Resource Management. So my results have now reduced to 3,260. I'm also going to filter by publication date. And I'm going to choose a range of dates. So I'm going to select 2015 to 2021 and then apply filter. So I now have 1,000 search results and I'm going to look through my search results and then select 
this article, the moderating effect of the green human resource management or the association to proactive environment management and financial performance in for small farms. Uh, maybe to talk more about the green tick means that you have a full access to this journal article. So I'm, going, I'm opening my full article. Here you can see the number of views it has, the, the number of citations, over six of them. And then I can be able to download citation for this particular article. You can also open the PDF here. I also have related articles on the site. So yeah, I don't need to go back to the other side. I can just click on some of these articles which are related to this article. I maybe talk more about some of these labels. You can see a green tick here and then this other label. This means an open access article where this one is a subscription based article. That is the difference. The open access article is free of charge. This one is subscription based. If you don't have a subscription, you won't be able to get this article. So for us, we are getting it because we are subscribed to Taylor and Francis. So if I want to download, you just come here and click on PDF and then a PDF file will be, down, will be opened from which I can proceed, download and save. So there is also another service for authors if you would like, if you are interested in authoring with Thailand Francis, you have information for authors here, you click on it <laughs> and then you'll be able to get information and the publication process of Taylor and Francis. So you can see the author services provided by Taylor and Francis, publishing your search, uh, choosing whether to publish in an open access, then the policies, the research impact, the policies, and the inside blog guide on how to publish your research, understanding genometrics, and then we have the COVID-19 resources and support for you. So basically, that is all with the journal database. In your free time, you can decide to go through all the databases and you will appreciate the content in each of the individual databases on our list. So all these are databases, you can go through each one of them, some are highly specialized but some are multidisciplinary. So databases like American Society of Civil Engineers is basically good for engineers. However, some databases like Gesto, ProQuest, Oxford, Springer, Taylor and Francis, Emerald are multidisciplinary. Lexis Nexis is for law. Abyss Coast is also multidisciplinary as well as Cambridge Core. For now, we are ending our presentation. See you in the next presentation. Bye.